Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be comparing a failing dropshipping store from one of our wholesale TED subscribers, Dragon Slayer Chest, against a successful dropshipping store selling similar items, Norse Blood. In this video, I'm going to be explaining why Norse Blood has been able to successfully sell these products, and Dragon Slayer Chest has, well, not. And I think some of the things that I'm going to say might genuinely surprise some people and might challenge some of your ideas and beliefs, especially in the latter part of the video. And if you do disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments section. So let's get started. Now, there is something that a lot of people often say to me, Sarah, I've followed all of your advice, but my store is still losing money. I don't understand why other stores are successful and mine is not. SOS, please help. All right, John, so you seem like a lovely person, and I know I say it every time I review a subscriber's store, but I just wanna let you know, I might be kind of harsh on you. In fact, I will be harsh on you, but it's only because I care. Okay, so sorry in advance. I hope I don't offend you. So in the comment, John said that he watched my video literally titled, Why You Aren't Making Sales. In that video, I give every store that is struggling to get customers to buy from them despite having traffic, a 15 point checklist to go through to see if their store is missing anything important. Now John said that he's watched the video and that he's done all 15 things right. Let's see if his store really does tick all the boxes. So let me start out by just showing everyone John's store, Dragon Slayer Chest. Now, as I review this store, if you've got any advice for John, please leave it in the comments section below. I don't have time to talk about everything in a YouTube video, so any advice you have for him, I'm sure would be appreciated. So as you can see, John's store is in the niche of dragons, Vikings, that sort of area of medieval fantasy mythology. Unfortunately, I know nothing about this niche from a personal perspective. I'm not the target audience, but I know a fair bit about it, uh, how well it does sales-wise online. So down here, we can see that John has a refund policy, shipping policy, terms of service, you know, legal pages, and that's a relief. You wouldn't believe how many stores don't have this, so that's good. Let's now go and check out some of the products that you got listed here, John. Uh, and so here we go. As you can see, John's store is selling lots of unique items, mostly dragon themed items. You know, check out these rings. They're all very strongly dragon themed. And something I've noticed is that John has varied up the prices a lot in his store, which is something I strongly recommend. Uh, what that means then is that when you see this ring here on sale for $90, it is a psychological marketing technique to anchor the price for our brains and make this $15 ring here feel like a much better deal. Bearing up prices is something I recommend most stores do, so I appreciate that you took the time to do this. So that's John's store, uh, now let's review it. To keep this video from getting insanely long, I'm going to stick to talking about three things. We're going to review his product selection, we're going to review his advertising and traffic strategies, and we're going to review his store design. So let's move on to the first one. One, did John pick good products to drop ship? The answer here is yes, you did. Well. Mostly. There are definitely a few questionable products in there. This one in particular stood out to me. You seem, John, like you're an actual fan of the niche yourself, which is a good thing, so I'm not quite sure why you chose to include this. These are candy skull earrings. The candy skull niche is based on the Mexican holiday of the Day of the Dead. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a lot of money in the candy skull niche. My friend and wholesale TED regular contributor, Michael Shi, made over $1 million from selling his pair of shoes that he made in his print-on-demand store. But your store, John, is in the fantasy medieval mythology niche and has nothing to do with the Mexican mythology niche. So this looks really out of place. But as I said, you do have lots of other products in here that have performed really well for dropshipping stores. For example, back to the rings. Now, a lot of these dragon themed rings that you have and are selling, these have performed very well for dropshippers and still do to this day. These are viral worthy products. They appeal to an extremely passionate fan base and they are very unique. You cannot just go buy them at your local mall. Like take this ring here, this has performed very well. Check out this ad on Facebook. 23,000 engagements, over 300 comments, over 590 shares. This is a viral product. In this ring that you're selling here, this one has done super well on Facebook too. Check it out, this ad posted by Norseblood did extremely well. Over 18,000 engagements, over 1,000 comments, over 3,000 shares. So yes, you've definitely picked some items that have huge dropshipping potential. And actually, I think that this is a good time for a bonus tip. <laughs> 
So this ad here, it did crazy good. And interestingly enough, a lot of people actually ended up posting that they purchased them as engagement rings, which makes a lot of sense given its premium price point. You see, Norseblood, the successful money-making dropshipping store, they are selling this ring for $50. That's a lot of dollars, especially when you consider how many dollars it costs them to buy it. Right now, this ring, depending on which size you pick, costs between $12 to $14 to buy and ship to the USA with e-packet shipping. That is a huge markup, and the reason why they can have such a huge markup is because if you scroll down the page, you'll see on the AliExpress listing that they can engrave a name inside this ring for free. Now, when you offer a customization like that, it does two things. Firstly, almost no one would question that you actually have the rings yourself, most people would assume that you are the one doing the engraving. Secondly, no matter who does the engraving, it turns this mass-produced product into a handmade item. The ring you now have is unique and special. And thirdly, because the ring is now unique and special, the value is ambiguous. There is no way to find a dragon-themed ring at your local store that is also engraved with your name, so customers can't price anchor it against a similar cost item, which of course means that the value is ambiguous, meaning you have more leeway to mark it up. And you know, there are a surprising amount of products that can be customized that you can drop ship from AliExpress. So that's definitely something to keep in mind when you're doing product research and choosing products to list in your store. And by the way, if you are enjoying this video and learning something, be sure to subscribe so that you can learn even more about building a successful online store. Anyway, back to the review. So John, you have definitely picked some good products for sure. However, let's take this product that you're selling here, this dragon ring. Now I've got a quiz question for everyone and if you get it right, you'll win 10 points. Yay! So this page is missing something that the Norse Blood page has, and you need to figure out what that is. You've got five more seconds to look at this. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, now over to the Norse Blood product page. As I said, John's product page is missing something that this product page has. I'm gonna tell you what it is in five, four, three, two, one, and time's up. All right, drum roll, please. The answer for 10 whole points is, there is, inexplicably, no product description for John's product page. If you guessed that correctly, then you win 10 points. Yay, and actually, it's even worse because check out these bullet points here. All John has done is taken the product specifications from over at his AliExpress supplies listing. Dropshipping Shopify apps like Oblo usually do this as a default option. That's why he has this weird bullet point here. Shape, backward slash, pattern, animal. It's because his AliExpress supplier has that as one of his product specification bullet points. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think is going to happen when a new potential customer comes and sees this? That gonna be like... Now, John, do you remember what you said to me? I watched your video and believe I satisfied the criteria. Well, I would beg to differ, John, because in that video, one of the crucial questions that I ask you is this. Question 10, did you add product descriptions to each of the products that you were selling? The answer, John, is that you haven't. Now, I've been looking through your store, I can see that for most items, you've either just pulled the AliExpress product specifications or at times written no description at all. And for some of them, they have this really awkward variant drop-down menu, which you haven't fixed. And several of these have really low quality images, which is something I talk about avoiding in that video as well. Except for this product here, this one product that you've put a lot of work into, even though it's only very loosely tied to your store's niche. And nothing in your description plays up that connection at all. This is all extremely generic copy. And the fact that Norse Blood has added unique product descriptions and that you haven't is actually a lot more important than you might realize and I'll address why later in the video. For now though, let's move on to the next part of the store review. Two, do you have an effective advertising strategy to drive new customers and sales to your store? The answer here is a straight up no. No, 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 you have not done this. And honestly, this is probably the number one reason that you've made no sales because you've done so little to get customers into your store. Now, normally on this channel, I recommend that beginners that want to make fast sales to products in their store invest in a paid advertising strategy such as Facebook ads. This is the fastest way to drive targeted high quality traffic. 
but I also understand that not everybody wants to pay for ads. And I'm sorry, John, if I am wrong. I just couldn't find any evidence that you were actually using them, so I can't critique them. But what I did see is that you are trying to drive free Instagram traffic and I'm going to explain to you why it's not working for you and why this traffic strategy is working for others. So here's what I saw John doing. He's using free Instagram traffic to drive customers and traffic to his store. And so what he's doing is he's posting lots of cool, relevant pictures to the account, using related hashtags to drive viewers. He's built up a fan base of followers so that he can then make posts like these advertising products in his store, putting the link to the product in his bio. Now this is a free traffic strategy and it works. For example, it's worked for this Instagram page here, Kit Curio. Now if we go to the store, but they've linked to in their bio, we'll be taken to, surprise, surprise, an AliExpress dropshipping store built with Shopify. They've been doing this now for quite a long time, since 2017. And so over time, they've added over 200 products to their store. So Cat Curio is of course following the same strategy that John is trying to copy. They have posted lots and lots of viral worthy pictures and videos to Instagram, slowly building up their fan base. And they'll come from time to time here and advertise products like this one here on their page, which of course they are selling in their store. That they are drop shipping for big markups from AliExpress. So, you know, back to the question. Why is Cat Curio making money and sales from this traffic method and Dragon Slayer Chest isn't? Well, the answer is actually really simple. They've been doing this since 2017 and John, you've been doing this for a month. And over that period of time, they have organically grown to over 60,000 followers. Whereas you have just a thousand followers and given how many pages you are following, a lot of these will be low quality follows that you've gained from the follow unfollow method. And to be honest, John, this is not a scalable strategy like paid ads are, so you'll never see the same results as you would from those. But regardless, while scrolling through your page, I noticed something else that you missed from my 15 point checklist. And that is that you should try to advertise at least 20 products. While scrolling through your page, I only saw direct ads with calls to action for just six products, which honestly makes sense because again, you have only been doing this for one month. Not only is that way too short of a time to have built up any significant traffic or conversion data, but no matter what, your traffic quality is going to be way worse than Cat Curios. And that's because they've been doing this for years. Over time, they've built up a relationship with their pages fans, and because of that, they'll convert better. You can't build a relationship in a month. A relationship takes time. Basically, John, you have unrealistic expectations. You can't expect to be an overnight success. If you want to have Cat Curio's success, then you need to be willing to put in the time like they did. And North Blood have also used a similar strategy, except they've built up a huge Facebook fan page with 80,000 fans, and they've built up a big Facebook group of dedicated Norse mythology fans. And so because of this, when they do go and post a product on their Facebook page, their fans like them enough to go and actually buy the products. All right, so onto the final thing that I'm going to be reviewing for Dragon Slayer Chest. Three, is your store designed well? Is it trustworthy? I'm just gonna say this right now. No, 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 your store does not look trustworthy. But you know, it's not just because it has design flaws, it's because of the specific type of design flaws that it has. Now this is the part of the review where I said that some people might disagree with me. Usually in this part in a store review, you'd be just critiquing design flaws left, right and center. But the honest truth is that in a niche store, if you build it right, you can get away with some. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say that not having a nice design doesn't help. It most certainly does help, but you can still run a profitable store making sales with some design flaws again, if you do it right. Case in point, we're back at Norse Blood here. Now check this out. This is the ring of theirs that they advertised that blew up. This page is ugly, so ugly. I'm really bad at explaining why things are ugly. Web design isn't my area of expertise, but even I can point some things out. For one thing, look at this big ugly white space next to their ring image gallery. This looks terrible. And look down here, they've just got this big picture of the ring and dent to the left. Just lots of really awkward white space below more awkward white space. And they've got these massive paragraph spaces which add even more awkward white space. And look at their ring sizing chart that they've just ripped from AliExpress. It's a completely different font and it's even a little pixelated and clearly low quality. So, you know, not a well-designed page in the slightest. A lot of ugly, strange design choices. And yet, despite these uh, 
interesting design choices, Norse Blood are still making money and sales. So why is that? You see, here's the thing. Usually when you see a poorly designed page like this, you go, oh, what a horrible design. How unprofessional. How can I trust the store like this? And that's the thing. Poor design choices hurt your trust with the customer. But Norse Blood are actually able to overcome this objection because of elements like these that they've added throughout their entire store. Check this out. They actually link to different dragon stories throughout Norse mythology. Now, why is this so effective? Well, it's effective because now people aren't just buying a ring, they are buying the story behind the ring. Now let's take a look at the page for your exact same ring. What have you listed here? You've listed product specifications. This is not why people buy it. This, the story, this is why they buy it. Norse Blood puts this ring into the context of Norse mythology. And so now when people buy it, it makes them feel like they are a part of this world and they give this love for all the major products that they advertise and push. Take this wolf pendant here. They're selling this in their store, and as you can see, they've had a lot of success advertising this on Facebook. And well, you know, honestly, this is just a cool looking fantasy Viking wolf pendant. That's all the AliExpress supplier has advertised it as, a Viking inspired wolf pendant. But look, they didn't just call it a wolf pendant, they gave it a story. They've called this the Fenra wolf pendant. Fenra is a major wolf figure in Norse mythology. And in the description, they use it as a chance to further connect wolves to Norse and Viking mythology and to tell a story with this product. And here is the thing, by adding this, they prove their love, passion, knowledge, and thus authority in the niche. And they've done this in other ways too. They've written a bunch of blog posts that all talk about elements of Norse mythology that are related to the products that they sell and they consistently post new pictures and videos to their Facebook fan page that fans of this passionate niche actually appreciate. And so, you know, when people land on this page and they see these horrible design flaws, it's a lot more easily forgiven. And that's because Norse Blood prove themselves to be trustworthy because they've showcased their knowledge and by crafting an experience around their products. And so, when you see these design flaws like this horrible white empty space, you're like, eh, web design, that's not their expertise. Norse mythology is. Now that's the thing about Dragon Slayer Chest, is that by having this generic product specification description box, it doesn't just look lazy. It makes it look like you know nothing about the product or the niche at all. And so you build up no goodwill or trust to offset the design mistakes that I'm gonna point out right now. One of those mistakes is down here. Now you've got these green buttons, which I think is a mistake. This doesn't fit with your niche and it looks terrible. But if you'd built up an experience like Norse Blood did, you could probably still have gotten away with this. Of course, it's an easy fix, so, you know, why not fix it? And if we come to your homepage, this banner image here, this is ugly. And the other banner image you have, it's ugly too. But again, that level of imperfection could have been overlooked by potential customers if they trusted you otherwise. Down below the banner, I can see you're using Shopify's category homepage widget. I really hate this widget. Most people who use it don't use it well. It almost always looks ugly. My advice for you is to switch this out and just list your favorite products here. This will look way nicer than just, you know, listing your product categories. But again, if people had, you know, built up trust with you in other ways, you could probably, you know, have mistakes like this, just like Norse Blood do, and still have sales but there are some mistakes that are worse than others. This design mistake here of having this picture of a generic girl next to images or generic earrings, this is way worse than a poorly designed bad banner image. Why? Because with the banner image, at least you tried to make it related to medieval mythology. This has literally nothing to do with it, which again, doesn't just make you look lazy. Much worse, it makes it look like you don't understand this niche at all, so it hurts your authority. But given these stories that you've written down here, I suspect you actually do know and really like this niche, which is great because you know what? This is how Norse Blood have been able to successfully sell the same products you're struggling to sell. They took the time to build up their authority and connect their products to their niche. And so John, if you want to have success, this is what you should do too. Thanks for watching this video. And as always, if you would like to learn even more about how to build and grow and scale your own successful dropshipping store, then you should be sure to download our free ebook, which teaches the six steps that six figure online stores follow to make over $10,000 a month. And you'll find a link to download that in the video description below.